You're listening to the Aligned and Unstoppable podcast. And I love this week's podcast because I have a special guest with me today, Adriana Kiefer. And we talk all about human design, uh, her journey into human design, how she got into it and coaching and manifestation. Um, And then we go through each of the five different human design types. So if you don't know your human design type, this is a great opportunity to just hit pause, get your quick human design type, and then come back to this episode because there's a lot of great stuff in it for you, especially all the way at the end where we really dive into using your design type in business and how, you know, the pros and cons and sort of your various types. And I think what's also really special about this week's episode with Adriana is hearing her journey into entrepreneurship. It's very conversational. We have a lot of laughs. I think you'll also laugh at some of the things that show up in this week's episode. Um, And I will say that the reason that Adriana and I even met to record this episode is because we are both members of the Entreprenista League. It's an online membership for female entrepreneurs and CEOs. It's been really great. I've been a member for a number of months now, and I have found it really useful for networking to be guests on other people's podcasts as well as have them on mine. There are great opportunities in there. And I really believe in this community. I feel like part of our job as entrepreneurs is to network. So if you're wanting to expand your personal network, I'm going to leave my own affiliate link in the podcast show notes. So if you'd like to learn more about the Entrepreneurs Delete, and join. It would be my honor to warmly welcome you into this community. And of course, I'm there. So that's awesome. So anyway, let's get into this week's episode on human design and your business. As always, if you are loving the episode, take a screenshot, share it with your friends on Instagram or in text message. Make sure you like and subscribe and follow me on all of your favorite listening platforms, wherever you're listening to this right now. Make sure that you follow me. And if you're on Instagram, send me an Instagram DM. Tell me if you enjoyed this week's episode. All right, here is this week's episode with my special guest, Adriana Kiefer. All right. Well, warm welcome back to the podcast, friends. I am pleased to be joined by Adriana Keith today. And we are going to dive into, you know, where you're blocked in your human design and some strategies to help you overcome that. I know all of you geek out about human design. I do too. And I also kind of feel like it's like a little bit of a foreign language to me that I haven't quite picked up on yet. I know like how to count to 10 and that's about it. (laughs) And so if you are new to human design, I think this is a really fun place to start. I know my audience, we love to talk about money. And so um, Adrienne and I were just saying before we started recording, we'd love to talk about money too. So I'm sure that will tie into this in a big way. But before we get into that, um, Adriana, I'd love to have my guests introduce themselves. Uh, let us know a little bit more about you and how you got to this place. Of course. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, w- I was really excited about this recording because I love listening to your podcast and I love your energy and we both say the F word a lot. And so I'm, I'm, on, I'm down with that. <laughs> um, I'm Adriana. I'm from central Massachusetts. I'm a mom of three, a wife, um, an animal lover. I love wine and swear words and new girl and Schitt's Creek. And that's probably all my favorite things right there. Um, but <laughs> I love, I watch new girl like every oh, week or Schitt's so Creek. Good. I alternate between the two of them. It's like so night, good. Night, night music. Well, that and work and moms. Have you seen work and moms yet? I've seen some of it. I haven't watched mm. it. Like it's not oh. the same degree. Like I've watched the other no, ones. No, it's not the same, but still times. good. Still good. I, yeah. So I'm a sucker for the, that type of show. I actually <laughs> ended up marrying a man who's very much looks like and acts like Schmidt. So love <laughs> oh it. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I know that happened after the fact. Hilarious. Um, but yeah, I started in coaching actually through the network marketing model. And my coach at the time was like, trying to point out to me that I really should branch out on my own because I'm a very good coach. That's my, that's my favorite part of the team. Mm -hmm. And during that time I was actually in real estate. I was so burnt out. I was exhausted. I was pregnant with my second child. I'm a very high anxiety person. I was stressed out all the time. I wasn't sleeping and the market was kind of like it is now. It was just like four years ago that I stopped. So it was crazy. And I, I needed to figure my stuff out. So yeah. um, started working with multiple life coaches and then a business coach. And then I just ended up 
jumping in, I was like, why the hell not? I mean, I was on maternity leave. Let's have fun. <laughs> right. Well, going from real estate into coaching, like the, I can see there are some definite correlations and having to have, you know, patience, you have to be really self-motivated and self-driven, um, getting yourself out there, you know, and I mean, also with, with real estate, like I know people who, you know, they struggle selling low price houses and people who just have like these bazillion dollar listings and they're like killing it. And so there's mm -hmm. such a wide spread that you have to choose from and like where you're, where you're living. We're both in Massachusetts. I think it's like the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you finally dove into coaching, um, how did you decide sort of where you wanted to be? I mean, coaching is so broad and it's a, it's a saturated market. I mean, there's so many coaches out there mm -hmm. and there's a very low barrier of entry. So how did you start to differentiate yourself in when you yeah. started coaching? I mean, luckily that was very similar to real estate too. I mean, they're a dime a dozen. It's yeah. you, you stand out or you don't. And with coaching, it was not as smooth sailing from the get-go as real estate. Like with real estate, I won two awards my very first year and it just kept on going. And then with coaching, it really took some time to find my groove, really took time to understand how to stand out. And because with real estate, you know, people either have to buy this, you know, this house or they're ready to make the investment. They've been saving up for it. But with coaching, a lot of times people don't understand they need it until they really need it. And then, mm -hmm. then it's like, well, do I want to spend the money and going through all that? Mm -hmm. So that was definitely challenging, navigating, learning how to sell myself, essentially, yeah. and, and have them understand why this is important, especially because I was working with a lot of moms and moms are notorious for not spending on themselves. So <laughs> even that took me a while. But yeah. at first I worked a lot in like the finding your purpose because that's what everyone kept coming to me for. Like, how did you figure this out? How did you get here? What books do you read? What podcasts do you listen to? So I did that. Um, it didn't take right off though. I mean, mm. I had clients, but it wasn't like the success that I always envisioned for myself. So working with different coaches, I play around with different offers. Um, I always think having a business coach is crucial, no matter who you are, we all need one. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of transformed over time, I started mm. to also throughout this time understand my own sense of spirituality. I did not have any sort of spirituality for a very long time. I grew up in a Christian Catholic household. I never resonated with it. Um, I unfortunately struggled for a few years with sexual abuse as a child and mm. very much like, why would this happen to me? You know, mm. so I lost all sense of faith then. Oh. And it was just over the past few years. Um, taking up yoga during that, what I call my quarter life crisis with real estate, mm -hmm. I wanted to find a hobby and outlet and yoga. That's what started everything for me. Yeah. And it led to meditation, like scripting manifestation. And it just kept going Reiki. It became certified in Reiki and like all, all these things. Yeah. So it just kind of spiraled out of there. And so now the more I was working with clients, the more I was like, yeah, but it's not just about your goals. Like what are you feeding your body? Are mm -hmm. you getting movement in your day? And we would meditate in the sessions. And I started to realize, okay, I'm kind of a holistic coach. And then it just, everything else that I was interested in that I would bring into my sessions, like manifestation, like human design, they wanted more of. Yeah. So I really started to niche down, uh, which everyone's afraid to do, right? So the more I niche down though, the more success I found and the more happiness I found because oh, I was absolutely. finding I came out of the spiritual closet, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I know that mm -hmm. feeling too. When I came out of my spiritual closet, everything exploded. You know, you mm -hmm. have self doubt and fear that people are going to think you're this like total weirdo. And like, I always personally had fears of like, they're going to see that I'm this super intuitive person and not want to have anything to do with me. Like, I don't know why I would think that, but that's what always stopped me. And similar to you with coaching, it was a progression of once I started to like, let it out a little bit, then I let it out a little bit more. And then I was finally giving myself that freedom to be fully embodied. And I hear your story kind of similar, even with yoga, kind of getting you back into your body, reclaiming your body, coming back to yourself, and then being able to express it in other facets of your life. And then 
immediately with your work as well. And Mm -hmm. when you can see that your sessions are more dynamic and more robust, that builds confidence. And it's like, well, damn, I guess this is, this is me. This is how I want to be in my work. And when we can put that true, authentic self out there in the world, doing what you love, like that is the jam. That is what Mm -hmm. we're all hoping to do. And when you come at the world with that kind of energy, it is so yummy and magnetic. So it, it does, it does say, oh yeah, she knows what she's doing. And so you know, I teach this in my programs too, around being a specialist versus a general practitioner and standing out in a saturated market can be really challenging. And I think that on one hand, you know, folks want to grow business and they want to make an impact. On the other hand, there are so many subconscious saboteurs that are not permitting them from getting out there. And so I know we want to kind of dive into that because as we get into human design, you and I were kind of chatting about there are some, there's like some groundwork that has to be done before you can truly unlock your human design. So um, what have you discovered with your clients when you started to kind of activate them with, with your work? It's so funny because the more that I've started to understand the stories in the subconscious, the more I'm I'm easily picking up on it. Like how you were just saying, you don't know why you felt as though being intuitive was like a bad thing. But if you think about it, when we were kids, Mm -hmm. I don't know about how your parents, but my parents would not go see a psychic. Like that would be weird. It wasn't weird in my family. It Ah, wasn't even, it just wasn't talked about. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. That's part of it is like, these things are not just subconscious that happened to us in this lifetime. But when we actually do the real work, we find out where it was rooted from, from mm-hmm. other lifetimes and, yes. and, and through generations. And so, you know, there, there's well-documented evidence that shows that our lineage carries imprints of what's happened to our ancestors. So you might not have had, like, for me, like I wasn't in a Christian home. I was in a Jewish home and they didn't care. And then my dad saw a Reiki practitioner. So it was not like taboo, but like he was a physician. So like, I guess like in that realm, it's a little bit like off from center, Um, but it was never a thing. And so you think like, where did that come from? Well, it wasn't from this lifetime. I know that Mm. we can unpack so much when we really get hyper-focused. Like that's part of our evolution as business owners is really all that internal work. We are not separate from our business. So our Mm -hmm. business growth cannot happen if we're just like, no, I'm just here. I'm still like, it literally, it's not, you can't, it does not work that way. But at the same time, you don't want to attach your self-worth to your business. And it's Mm -hmm. just like this constant personal development journey. (laughs) And then you're like, why in the world would I come into this lifetime and do this crap? Like, exactly. Exactly. I know. I can't (laughs) wait to dive into more about epigenetics. It fascinates me so much, but I know that's for a whole nother topic. Um, I, I started seeing when I would work with clients or I mean, even with my own work, you know, we, they'd be really fascinated by something, they'd be in it. And then by the next session, they'd be like, oh, but this, this, and this. And I'm like, okay, why are they not seeing that progression? Why are they not holding true to what they want to do? Why are these affirmations feel bad to them? If you're doing affirmations and they feel bad, that's why would you, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So I started to dig real deep and shout out to, to be magnetic. Are you familiar with to be magnetic in the expanded podcast? Yes. They do a lot of this deep subconscious work. And mm. I started to understand that. And of course I read the body keeps the score yeah. and learned so much about myself as you know, the PTSD and everything. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, wait, if we're holding on to all of these stories and all of this subconscious patterning, how are we ever going to, this is why we can't reach those goals. This is why, like someone tells us, oh, this will work if you do this. And then we try and do it and then we fail. And we're like, oh, that, why am I so bad at this? Mm -hmm. So your, and your body manifests in all sorts of different ways, the stories that you're holding on to, the trauma that you're holding on to. We know that it does that physically with illness and whatnot, but what's not talked about enough is that if you subconsciously only think you can make $5,000 a month, 
and you truly don't believe that you can get past that, you're not going to get past that. So we need to dig deeper and figure out where did this come from? Where did this stem from? And a lot of the time, if you're like me and you had a traumatic past, your memory is shot. Like you can't remember a lot of childhood. So when someone would ask me, oh, go back to a memory and let's work on that memory. I'd be like, I don't know. I literally don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's where the powerful work with the subconscious mind hypnosis is something I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Is, is like life-changing because it brings up these memories that you didn't know were still stored in your body that you have so much resentment in or hatred or um, my biggest, biggest pattern that we found out was that I felt like a disappointment. Mm. Everything I did, I felt like a disappointment. And so I really had to work through that in order to move on. That was continuing to hold me back. No matter matter how hard I hustled, pushed and did all the client meetings and didn't matter because I was still going to hold myself back. And I, it just, it had to be worked out. Yeah. Absolutely. And even hearing you say that, it makes me think even the story I just shared around like people would leave me abandonment. Like that's mm-hmm. my, that's my core wound of, of abandonment. And I, I too, like you, like there's very, I have a very limited memory as a child and an adolescent. Um, and even when you don't have the memories, it doesn't mean you can't access those places. Mm -hmm. And so part of the work that I do energetically is, uh, as I tap into those places and I don't have to have a story to hold on to, um, your energy field shows me where we need to go and where we need to begin. And it can become like a conversation of, okay, this is where, let's say we're in your throat chakra, we're in your throat chakra and I'm feeling this constriction. And all of a sudden I'm seeing this sort of video in my mind of this situation as a child and you're at Catholic school and the nuns are saying something to you. And then all of a sudden you were hit and you were punished and you were put somewhere else. And you realize at that point, my voice doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it doesn't even have to be an actual memory. It can be what's playing out in your energy field that needs to be shifted and cleared. And so like, that is what's so significant when you can finally realize that you have to unearth a lot of stuff so that you can truly heal past those things. And, you know, you don't have to have the memory. You can, you can obviously do um, hypnosis. You can do all kinds of work. Um, And I've even had people in certain circumstances say like, they don't remember exactly and that's okay if you don't remember exactly because your your intuition will take you to the place that you need to do the work on and from there that it's like the next piece the next piece the next like and when you're when you're with somebody as a practitioner who is highly skilled they can hold the container for you to go wherever you need to go and to lead you or to hold the space or to stop or to stay or to clear or whatever they need to do for you so it's, it's tremendous work. And it sounds like you've been really blessed to work on yourself with some really skilled practitioners and with your own work. Mm -hmm. And I I also did an Akashic records reading Mm -hmm. and that was also mind blowing because there was some abandonment and loneliness there that Mm -hmm. also carried through into this lifetime. So yeah, just like you were talking about all the the past lives and genetics and it's all there. Mm -hmm. And now as you're talking about your energy work, I'm like, Oh God, what is she picking up about me right now? (laughs) Okay. So, 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 okay. So here's the fun part. Okay. So it's kind of (laughs) like, so I used to think the same. I used to think the same thing when I started doing energy work, when I was 18 years old, I've been doing this for 23 years. And when I started going to school, I literally thought the same thing. I'm like, everyone, it's like, I thought I was like, just standing naked in the room. Naked. Yes. Period into my soul. (laughs) All my bits. And I'm like, you can see it all. Oh my God. But here's the thing. And the fun, fun fact about people who are highly sensitive or psychic, we don't want to know most of the time, like we don't want to know. And therefore, we don't get information coming at us. Also, for me, so I've been doing this for a really long time. I actually find it to be very unethical to access somebody's energy field without their permission. Mm -hmm. And so I have like, this happened to me, I was at a retreat somewhere, 
I was in um, Arizona and this woman come up who's very like, oh, very esoteric. Like she came up to me and basically gave me the spiel of like, you're the chosen one. I have to tell you this thing. It's like really important that I do this activation for you. And I was like, well, what? Literally. And I was like, it just sat really weird. And I was like, thinking like, what is she talking about? I'm the church. What? And I said something to a friend of mine who was at the same event. And I was like, what is this thing? She's like, did you give her permission to access your field? I'm like, I did not. And she's like, then it's total bullshit. And I'm like, mm. yes, that is yes. what it is. I'm like, thank you. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't like put my finger on like why it was so off uncomfortable yeah and I was like it's so off and so the the to backtrack uh one I'm not I'm not tapping into your field however there was a podcast episode when I was like years ago when I was with somebody and I was talking to him and all of a sudden I was like oh boy (laughs) like information (laughs) (laughs) information started to come in and I was like podcast exclusive um sir can you please put your clothes on (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm getting some information. I don't know this is relevant. And I did start channeling a little bit for him on the podcast. Um, but typically that doesn't happen. And <laughs> it's it's really, you know, it's like an on and off switch. And so my mm-hmm. team, like they know when I'm on and when I'm not on. And podcasting is not one of those times, typically speaking. Um, Good to know. So you're safe. You're safe. You're wrapped up like a cozy little. I didn't even think rug. about that when we first started until you said it. And I was like, because <gasps> <laughs> we've all been sick thing. here. We all have colds. And so I'm like, not in my best today. So I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it's all going Good. down sale from here. <laughs> um, well, so also, you know, it's, it's funny. So a lot of the things that we've already talked about are things that I do teach in my certification. And so. I created the certification not only to teach the energetics and advanced energy healing, but also the business ethics and how to actually create a profitable healing Mm. business. So for coaches and healers. And so part of it is to be able to do all this work and to package it and to get it out there for people. Um, So I do teach if people are listening, they're like, oh yeah, how do you do those things? I will teach you, but not right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. I know I ask so many questions. I get so into conversation that I'm like, wait, we're not even on topic anymore. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to rein it back in and we're going to talk about, you know, before you dive into human design types, I know it's really important that you clear some of the energy before that begins. So um, you kind of discovered that I'm sure with, mm-hmm. with seeing your clients, right? Well, the thing about human design is it's, all about conditioning of the world and how it's imprinted on you and how you're no longer who you were born as and who you're designed to be. You're, you're masking yourself and your insides are like screaming to get out, even if you don't realize it. And so when we want to decondition or or I'm sorry, when we want to live more in alignment with who we are, we have to decondition ourselves from where we're currently at. Mm -hmm. And I believe a lot of that work starts with the subconscious Mm -hmm. um, because you, you know, I've I've known about human design for a few years now, and then I would, you know, dabble in it here and there. And I'd try the strategy and the authority. And, and sometimes it worked well, sometimes it was not, it was like resistance. And I didn't fully understand why until I really started to do work in it and, and really wrap my brain around, you know, the books and the teachings of it. And it was all my subconscious blocking me from everything and all the old stories I was telling myself. So when I started actually implementing this into my business, like that is my business strategy is just living in alignment with my human design. That's my strategy. Mm -hmm. And when I started living by that, that's when business exploded. And so Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh shit, something is here. And it's more than just like reading my horoscope or something because it's astrology based. So there's a lot with astrology. Um, And then I started doing the work with my clients and you would just see the deep stuff that came up in this relief, this feeling of relief from them. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not even like they were purposefully holding it back some of the time. It's just like, holy shit, I didn't know that was there. But now that it's out there, I'm like, wow, I feel so much better. Yeah. And um, it was almost like this permission to move forward. Yeah. So uh, what would you say? I mean, we were talking about the different human design types, sort of what would you say, um, you know, you see, we're saying like, maybe it's not a pattern, but some commonalities within each type. And I will say this, um, the woman who does my podcast show notes, 
Nicole, who's definitely going to be listening to this, um, is been ha- she's been super into human design lately. Yay! And sometimes she'll ask me questions. Like she asked me a question. It's like, do you know if uh, your solar plexus is open? Do you know if your root is open? Is it a whatever? And I was like, listen, I'm just going to give you all my birth chart and you can find that <laughs> out for yourself. And then you tell me that. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah it is. It's fully developed. That's why it's easy for you to da 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 da. I'm like, Cool. Do you know what your type is? Do you remember? I'm a manifesting generator. Oh, okay, me too. Do you know what by. her type is? Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably be like, yes, I do know exactly what that is. Oh, no, I no. can't remember everyone's. I don't know what this check. is. That's I mean, not right. I mean, there's all these numbers on here. This is a mm-hmm. foreign language right now. It, it's so even with the work that I've been doing over the past couple of years, there's still so much I don't yet know. And I'm constantly learning about it. It's very in depth. Yeah. So I try to teach it from a very underwhelming way so yeah. that people don't feel like you're feeling like, what are all these numbers? And what are all these planets? And it's just, it's a lot. So baby steps, baby yeah. steps. So let's go, <laughs> let's go hit, let's hit the, each of the design types yeah. and sort of get a little information for folks who mm-hmm. are new to it, or maybe want to go in a little bit deeper because mm. truly I really feel like more and more and more people I know are using human design or gene keys and really accessing that next level in their business. So I I, I think this is like the present and I think it's also the future of business growth. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So, um, okay, we'll start with the five types. There's Mm -hmm. the generator, the manifesting generator, the manifester, the reflector, and the projector. Reflectors are super uncommon, only about 1% of the population. So I've only ever actually met three people who were known reflectors. And I was like, can I have your autograph? Um, But we'll talk a little bit about like how they can be supported both when they're in their business and and by other people. So, Mm -hmm. you know, everything I'm about to say, you can tell your your husband, your wife, your partner in, at work, like this is who I am and this is what I need from you. And this will be very supportive for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as a generator, mm-hmm. they're about like 35% of the population and they're very much like the workforce energy. They have the energy that can like go, go, go when they're feeling really lit up by what they do. They have that defined sacral center, which is what <laughs> your um, podcast <laughs> editor was talking about. And What they really need, what really works for them is to tap into that sacral response. And what that is, is their gut response. Mm -hmm. So generators tend to be very vocal. Mm -hmm. Like if they're having a piece of like delicious pizza, you might hear, "Mm." or someone's like, do you want to go out tonight? And they're like, like, you know, (laughs) that that vocal response, that's very natural for them. And that's literally their answer. um, If it's, if it's their authority as well. So your strategy is the way that you interact with the world around you and your authority is the way that you make decisions. So for generators, they have that defined sacral center. They want to tap into that gut reaction, Mm -hmm. you know, but if their authority is different, like emotional solar plexus authority gets a little bit more in depth, a little bit different, but we'll leave that for, you can find information on that on my website. So I'll give you that at the end. Um, So with generators, they they can also sometimes seem slow with projects because they need to like get one thing finished before they can move on to the next. That's mm-hmm. very hard for them to jump around, which is what my husband and I found out <laughs> when I found out he's a generator and I'm a manifesting generator. It was like, oh, because he would get so frustrated if he had to stop what he was doing and maybe help me with the kids, or um, I was all of a sudden working on a different project. He'd get frustrated with me because why are you hopping around? I get frustrated with him because I'd be like, why can't you hop around? <laughs> and then we understood like he, he just needs to finish something. Mm-hmm. So sometimes that generator type can seem slow, but what it is, is they just want to complete something before moving on. Mm-hmm. So asking generator, yes or no questions, Mm -hmm. waiting for that defined sacral response, and then allowing them to finish the projects that they need to finish. And so think about that, taking it into work. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what was my initial reaction when this opportunity came up for me? Mm -hmm. And then how can I make sure that I complete one project before moving on to the next? Super Mm -hmm. important. Great. With a manifesting generator like myself, um, another big part, big portion of the population, another like 37%, very much that workforce energy. Mm-hmm. 
We are similar to a generator where we have that defined sacral center and that gut response. Um, but we tend to seem a lot more speedy because we can hop around. We can do a bunch of things at once. And that's natural for us. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the very first thing that caught my eye with human design. My business coach at the time said, I think you really need to look into human design because I was going through this identity crisis. I I was growing up in my, I always had multiple jobs. That's me. I was always like, how can I make more money? How can I do all the things? And I jumped from one thing to another. And I was always thinking I was being viewed as a quitter. Hmm. I would get bored of something. I did the same thing with boyfriends. I'd get mm -hmm. bored and I'd move on. I had mm -hmm. my aunt used to call them flavor of the weeks. And mm -hmm. it wasn't really like, they were like, don't judge me. But it, it, that's who I was. And then, so when I first saw that I was a manifesting generator, multi-hyphenate, multi-passionate person who moves quickly to do things and mm -hmm. then just as quickly out of those things is yeah. that was so validating. Mm -hmm. So understanding as a manifesting generator that it's good for you to have multiple things going on, both for hobbies and mm -hmm. for work and um, define sacral center, saying yes or no to things and listening to that response. Mm -hmm. And encouraging manifesting generators to find more hobbies or to follow that spark, that passion. Tell them it's okay to have so many different interests. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing this in business, know that, you know, within reason, because you don't want shiny object syndrome, mm. but at the same time, know that if you're feeling like you've tapped out of where you're at, you don't have to stay there. That yeah. was very much me with, you know, teaching the purpose work mm -hmm. and working with moms in the decluttering space. I felt mm -hmm. like I was tapping out, but there was that part of me that was like, yeah, but I'm kind of already known for this and blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. you have to understand that you're made to learn something, excel at something, teach it to others, move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. I, I would agree with that as well. Mm. And as a manifesting generator, I know I can really only do things that I am super ecstatic and lit up about. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. I'm not there, it's like, you literally, you cannot make me. I, yes. um, last, at the end of last year, I was going into a launch for a program that was no longer lighting me up. And I was like, nope, we're not doing it. I stopped. Good for you. And I was like, I, I, re I mean, there was like 900 people sign up for this challenge that I was leading them in to join in this proven wow. program that it had multiplied and tripled attendance each time I opened it. I, it was proven. Like it was not, if people join, it was like, how many will I allow in? Like the thing was cranking and I was like, deuces them out. Like, I don't want this anymore. Good for you. That's so hard to walk away from. It so wasn't. it's really good that you, it, it well, for, I, for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for me, my team was like, What's happening? are we going under? And I was like, you're all going to be fine. Just just trust me on this. Like, oh. this is my ship. If we yep. all drown, we're all going to die. Yep. I'm not going to catch the ship <laughs> into an iceberg. It's going to be great. Um, but, but truly, you know, I think that, I mean, I would add on to that as saying, like, you know, it's good to, ha I have multiple passions and I, you can't make me do things I'm not excited about. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. That's, that's what really leads to burnout as a, mm -hmm. an, an either generator type mm -hmm. is when you're not feeling lit up by something and you're yeah. forcing it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when you're working 40 hours plus a week and you're not making the money you want to make. You're yeah. not lit up by yeah. what you're doing. And I will um, add like my, one of my programs is a membership that every single month I'm doing something different. And yes. so it just yeah. feeds my soul. Like yep. it's like my jam. Mastering Ascension mm -hmm. is my jam. I just get to geek out about it. And every single month mm -hmm. I'm like, what am I excited about? And I channel and I get to do whatever I want to do. And it's nice to have that outlet that you don't have to be like so formulaic with. Yeah. You. It's so funny because I have the same thing. I have another business that I recently started and it's a, a spiritual wellness collective. So every week we have different workshops with different healers. And mm -hmm. that also feeds my like, ooh, new and interesting, you know? Yeah, yeah. You need that itch <laughs> to be scratched. Yes, exactly. But then the same as like with the generator, like we also need to remember that we need to slow down mm -hmm. um, sometimes and not allow ourselves to get into that overwhelm space. We have a butt ton of energy. But we also need to remember to rest and rejuvenate For sure. like, like everyone. For sure. Yep. <clears throat> um, so with manifestors, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're really, really good initiators. Like 
they have an idea, they're a go getter, they run with it. Um, don't try and control them. Like they, mm-hmm. they just need to be in their zone, doing their thing, having control, um, and asking them too many questions can be to can come across as controlling to them. So if you're a manifester and you're feeling like you're struggling with that lately, you're struggling with this, this sense of anger, or wherever it's coming from, and you can't pinpoint why you're feeling frustrated it's likely that people, so, something someone's doing somewhere, you're feeling like you're being controlled by something. Mm. And mm. that's really difficult for you. Mm. Um, a- autonomy is really, really important for a manifester. Mm-hmm. So knowing that, it's how can I build my business in a way where I have the control and I can be the go-getter delegating as necessary because you don't have that generator energy. Mm-hmm. So yes, you can go balls to the wall and take on something, but it's also important to delegate when or or ovaries out as we say. (laughs) Yes. Ovaries out. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I love that. I'm going to use that. Depending. (laughs) I love it. Yes. Balls to the wall, ovaries out. Mm -hmm. And and I I kind of giggle when you said that too, because my husband's a manifester and I could ask him like the simplest question. He'd be like, why do you need to know? This is like, (laughs) like, I, I, uh, Are you all over me, woman? <laughs> or like the simplest, like has nothing to do with work. It has to do with yes. like, hey, um, where are you? Like he's on his yeah. phone in the truck. Where are you? I'm driving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, could you <laughs> narrow that down just a touch? I'm on the highway. Oh, like in this state, in this region. Like, and that's a manifesting generator trait is the the informing. A part of our strategy is to inform others of not asking permission, but to keep people in the loop when we're making decisions. And then we also feel frustrated when people aren't doing the same in return. So that's a part of being a manifesting generator. I need to know what's going on at all times. <laughs> yes, because we're spinning 19 plates. You're like, where is yeah. that plate spinning exactly? Yep. Uh, yep. It's hilarious. Totally normal. Yep. Makes so much sense. I, I think in the future, there might be a future for me with human design and relationships or sex mm-hmm. because it really intrigues me yeah. and like the the couples yeah. um but anyway so Ooh. manifestors also because they don't have that generator energy it's really important for them to settle down um and kind of slow their mind and such especially before bed um mm-hmm. because that's when like the racing thoughts can come through and having some sort of rest and rejuvenate before actually settling down for the day mm-hmm. is really, really healthy for them. I literally just said this to my husband the other day. Yeah, you? you need, yes, <laughs> See, we we're watching how to get away with murder and he couldn't sleep <laughs> after I was like, you need to clear yourself. And like, you got to <laughs> really like rest before yes. going to bed. Like he's like, I don't know. I just can't watch it. Like that's why we watch mm-hmm. new girl because it doesn't get them all amped up before bed. So it's hilarious that it's mm-hmm. part of his type. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh i i wonder what he'd say to all of this he'd probably be open to it right he's married to you (laughs) within reason like a little fringe he's still a little fringe yeah i don't know i mean he doesn't judge me anymore for all these oh good i do but he's he's like "Eh." yeah side eye debatable (laughs) (laughs) oh good um so the next two types that we talk about these are very much um, more of like, we need to rest, like take a nap, kind of, sort of. Like it's a joke, but not really. But projectors, mm-hmm. um, they're very, very good at seeing what other people don't see. They're very good guides and leaders and they give great feedback and advice. But that being said, part of their strategy, well, their strategy is to wait for an invitation before mm-hmm giving that guidance or giving that feedback. If not, that's when a lot of like bitterness feeling comes up. Like Mm. the other person's like, I didn't ask them, why are they trying to feel superior to me? And then the person who is the projector is feeling like, why does it feel like I'm talking to a wall? Why does this not feel right? And so waiting for that invitation, waiting Mm. for the initiation of whatever it is that you're trying to do is a huge, huge part of a projector. Mm. Now that doesn't mean that they have to like literally wait for like the, Hey, can you give me your feedback? If they're listening to your podcast, that's an invitation. They want to hear from you. If they're on your email list, if they're following you on social media, those are all invitations. They're literally opening up the door saying, I want to hear from you. Mm. So 
for projectors, I always suggest playing around with like, you know how Instagram on the stories has like the question stickers and everything. Mm. That's literally an invitation for you right then and there. Like do Mm. a poll, do a question. And then for people who respond to it, then you start the conversation. So that's one of those fun projects I like to give my projector clients when they're feeling like they can't move the needle on finding clients or growing their business. It's, well, are you asking, are you opening up that door for them to ask you? That, that's yes. Really Doing the biggest eye roll right now for people who can't <laughs> see me because I'm like, it's just, I, I, in part of my coursework, I was putting together the framework for attracting so many clients. And there are like, that's one of the main ones is like, well, are you just throwing things out there? Mm-hmm. Like, did anybody say that they wanted that? Are yep. you just like, yep. I'm going to, here's this offer. Like who mm-hmm. said that they wanted that? And, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Not that right? difficult. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, would you like this 19 item checklist? Like, no, no, <laughs> I don't want it. Could you give me the one thing that's at the top of it though? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That number one. Sure. <laughs> that's exactly it. Um, that that's who they are as projectors. Like they can, they can, they're, they're great coaches because they really see with like a whole new set of eyes. Mm. Um, but, but they really need to make sure that they're being invited into that conversation. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Projectors, um, they're very much known for only being able to work a few hours a day without needing rest. And what I mean by work is like to be in the work, like to be in your clients doing emails. Now, if part of your work is like educating yourself and making doing a training or something like that, and that feels easeful to you, that's not so much what I'm talking about, but it's really being in the work after a couple of hours, you're really tired. So it's Mm -hmm. really important for projectors to put in their work day like maybe literally an hour nap or Mm -hmm. an hour hike or whatever Mm -hmm. feels like rest to them. Maybe you need to turn off your brain by watching some trash TV, like Mm -hmm. whatever it is, create Mm -hmm. space within your day to make sure you're clearing that and you don't get lost in all the doing. That's when you'll really hit a wall. Your energy isn't right. Nothing will be right. Yeah. This is like textbook. (laughs) One of my team members is a projector and Mm. this is like her to a T and she knows her human design type. And like, she's really really great at at giving herself budgeting hours to like only do good for her and um even if we're like getting close because she only works for me 10 hours a week and she she will let me know i'm already at you know nine and a half i just want to let you know that that task will probably need to wait until next week i mean very good boundaries and i love that about her and i respect that about her so it's like okay great we'll just budget that for next week and yeah because um, also you know the work won't be done to the fullest extent of her energy if she's at that point yeah yeah. So like, why be the boss that's like, no, I really need this now. That's yeah. not good for her or you. Yeah. And in fact, even after this recording, I invited her to be on a call. I was like, she might need to be here. Like, I know I need to invite her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like you're telling me the story of my life with these design <laughs> types. I love it. I know I've done workshops for um, companies and it's very, it's really fun seeing how they interact with each other and how they, they go, Oh, about like, Oh, that person works this way. Oh, that's why. And it's yeah. really eye opening. It's cool to watch. Yes. So lastly, we have a reflector. Mm-hmm. Reflectors are considered lunar beings. So like the moon lunar and all of their centers are open. They have no definition. So this can lead to a lot of conditioning from the outside world if they're not living in their authentic design. Hmm. Now, what what this means for them in decision making and in doing anything big, whether it's building a business, buying a house, getting married, like whatever it is, they need to wait a full 28 days, a full lunar cycle in order to make a decision. So it's like filtering all through all of their centers and then they make it. So it's difficult in this, in this society, you can't like put a bid in on a house and then say, well, can you just give me like 28 days to make sure I really want it? It doesn't really work that way. Mm. Um, But for the decisions that you can make, make sure you're not jumping into a new business investment without waiting that lunar cycle and Mm. reassessing and making sure you find your clarity. That is probably one of the biggest mistakes um, with someone who's a reflector and doesn't know it or doesn't understand it is they jump into things and then they resent it, they regret it, 
or they end up, you know, quote, failing. I I don't believe in failure, but Mm. it's not right for them. Whatever it is, they lost a bunch of money. Mm. That is exactly why they're not following that lunar cycle and waiting for that clarity. So because they need that full cycle, I always think of like a woman in labor because Mm. when I was giving birth to my kids, they would always remind my husband, you know, well, I gave birth at home. So it was very different than in the hospital. And so they'd remind the midwives, remind my husband of like, suggest things to her, because if you straight out, ask her what she wants, she's not going to know she's in so much discomfort, whatever. And that's how I feel about reflectors. You want to help them by suggesting, suggesting places or people or whatever the recommendation is, um, and then allow them to find the space that they need. Maybe if it's a small decision, not really 28 days, but you can at least give them recommendations and suggestions. And that helps them to make a decision Hmm. on the spot for whatever it is they need. Um, And they really need to embrace fluidity yeah. because having their open centers means that every time they're around someone else with any sort of defined center, they're taking in that energy. So Mm -hmm. If they're not careful, (laughs) it can really treat their bodies poorly, but it can really be like a cool chameleon type of, um, I was going to say asset or trait, you know, like they can embrace the fluidity and enjoy the ride of being a reflector. It can be really cool. I I actually kind of wish I was a reflector sometimes because it's just really unique. It's cool. That is very unique. And I mean, you said like there's like 30% of this and 30%. Is there a percentage on reflectors? Do you know? 1%. Okay. I would imagine that. (laughs) Um, 1%. Yeah. And I mean, even as you said, like they have to wait a whole lunar cycle, like everything, Mm -hmm. my body like tightens up as I'm like (laughs) making 19 decisions. As you just said that one word, it's like, ah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, exactly. (laughs) I know it. Right. It's gotta be hard, man. (laughs) Yeah. It's gotta be hard. And I mean, if you think if you kind of pair, pair back as a coach, to know what your client's human design type is, or to know what your team member's human design type is, it can help you better lead them Mm. and to understand, you know, what they're working with. And Mm -hmm. if you know, you have a client, you give them like, here's an assignment that I need you to do this kind of research and get this kind of thing done. If they're delaying, it might not be because they're lazy or procrastinating, but they actually do need to take longer to absorb the assignment and make some decisions and to really embody it. And then maybe like, in a day, 28 days later, they might have something more spectacular. I think mm-hmm. this also like blaringly obvious. It demonstrates why we can't look at other people's businesses or models and think that that is the thing that's going to help us to fix everything. Because what works for one person, I always, when I, when I used to sell my mastermind and, you know, even past that is like, you need to create a one size fits you business model. Oh, yes. Because one size, like they're making the thing from their life path, from their personality traits, human design, like, like what's happened to them in the course of their lifetimes. Like that's their own distinct plan. And you can't think that that is possibly going to ever work for you because you're from a whole nother place. And we, we think that, oh, well, I bought this person's program and I'm going to follow their 10 step process, but for some reason, it's not working for me. Obviously I suck. I'm a failure. Like, yes, no, that is literally why I started doing this branch of my business. Yeah. I was working with a coach. She was great. Um, didn't, doesn't, you know, have a grasp on human design or anything like that. Um, but you know, they should push this strategy. And I was like, this is brutal, man. Like, I don't want to do that. And a lot of the other people were saying the same thing. One person it worked well for, and that just led us to feel like we aren't cut out for this coaching life. Yeah. Like, and that's not how anyone should feel because it's no. not, it's not the same for everyone. It can't no. be. No. And that's, I think part of what's coming up, you know, that as the paradigm shift from online business and coaching, you know, I believe that the people who are leading and are not trying to be these false gods to people, and they're not trying to give them the way, but rather lead them back into themselves are the ones who are going to thrive. And I feel that in my body, you know, I feel like, you know, 
as coaches, you're doing people a disservice if you're just giving them the one cookie cutter way. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, I actually have a friend who is in somebody's like really high ticket, you know, coaching program that you teach how to never even have to do sales calls and you close these like high ticket things, whatever. And even within that, they're like changing frameworks. It's like, this is the problem. It's like, Mm -hmm. like, things change. And if it's so set in stone, and it has to be that way for it to work, then maybe that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that that's been my, my life historically, too, is I go against the grain, and I do things maybe backwards or upside down. But it's the way that works for me. And that feels right in my body. And it leads to success. And I feel like, We all need to give ourselves permission, whether it's to listen to your human design or listen to your body to give yourself permission Mm -hmm. to do what feels right for you. And so Mm -hmm. I think this really is an amazing door opening. I think this is an amazing invitation for people to, you know, get a taste of their human design, hear what's resonant for them. I would love to hear after you guys have listened to this episode, what really has resonated, what sticks out the most? Was it about you? Was it about a friend, a partner, somebody in your business um, that really helped you to get clarity? And if you're wanting to know more about this kind of work and where Adriana is kind of moving her business direction into, um, you've now created a program where you're teaching people how to use human design in their business, which again, I feel like it's the present, but it's also the future. So, um, you know, if you want to check out more of Adrienne, like where can they find you? What's the best way for them to work with you or learn more about their mm-hmm. own or, or just kind of dive deeper? Yeah. Um, I, my website is my full name, adrianakeefe.com. On there, you can learn about coaching. I also do speaking. Uh, you can book a chart reading as well. Um, but I also have the human design program that you were talking about for business owners who are really tired of the hustle and grind and are frustrated and can't figure their way out. I'm in a program right now. I'm thinking it's going to launch into a course though, this probably January. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Um, I'm also on Instagram. That's probably my most active platform. That's Audrey Keith, A-D-R-I. I have a podcast called Women Who Want More. Not specifically human design tailored, but more inspiration, motivation kind of podcast. Awesome. Well, I know they'll be finding all the things, of course. Um, You know, if you guys are on the walk or driving, we will have all these links right in our show notes uh, right there for you conveniently waiting for when that time is right. Of course, um, right now you can take a screenshot of this week's episode and hop over onto Instagram and tag me and Adriana in your Instagram stories. Let us know you were listening and for sure DM us. Let us know what some of the biggest Mm. takeaways were. Um, If you love this episode, please share it with a friend and leave a kind review on your favorite listening platform. Thank you so much for being here, Adriana. It was so fun to dive into all this work with you and and to have some good laughs and maybe have some little (laughs) sidebar conversation in the middle of it. Those are my favorite kind of podcasts that we can really just kind of let it breathe and and just have a good time. Thank you so much. You're so fun to talk to. I could do this all day. (laughs) Great. Let's do that. And and I know I'll be on your podcast soon too. So stay tuned for that. All right, (laughs) listeners. Thank you for being here as always. Lots of love and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. 